Have you ever checked into a hotel room and felt an unsettling chill run down your spine? What if that feeling wasn't just your imagination, but something much darker? They say the walls of certain hotel rooms hold memories, whispers of the past that refuse to be silenced. Could you sleep soundly knowing that someone or something was watching you, waiting for the perfect moment to make its presence known? This is not just a story. It's a real account of my terrifying encounter in one of the most haunted hotel rooms in America. Keep reading if you dare. But be warned, after hearing my story, you might think twice before staying in a hotel room ever again. It was supposed to be an ordinary business trip. I was heading to a small town in the middle of nowhere for a weekend conference. The kind of town where the streets roll up at night, where you can walk down the main street and not see a soul after 9pm. It was the kind of trip I had made countless times before, and I wasn't expecting anything out of the ordinary. I arrived late in the evening. The autumn sun just a memory as darkness settled over the sleepy town. My GPS led me to the hotel, a grand old building that looked like it had been plucked straight out of a 1920s postcard. It was beautiful in that eerie, decayed kind of way, a place where time seemed to stand still. The hotel's exterior was imposing, with its tall, narrow windows and elaborate stonework. It towered over the small town, a relic from a time when it was the pride of the community. Now it stood as a monument to forgotten grandeur, with ivy creeping up its walls and the windows glaring down like hollow eyes. I walked into the lobby, greeted by the smell of aged wood and dust. The reception desk was an antique piece, polished to a shine, though the corners were worn with time. An old brass bell sat atop the counter, and beside it a guest book that looked like it hadn't been touched in years. A sense of foreboding tugged at the back of my mind, but I brushed it off as the weariness from a long drive. The receptionist was a middle-aged woman with a pleasant enough demeanor, though her eyes seemed distant, as if she was watching something far off in the distance. Welcome to the Westbrook Inn, she said, her voice flat. How long will you be staying with us? Just two nights, I replied, handing her my credit card. She nodded, swiping the card with a practiced motion before turning the guest book towards me. Please sign in, she said, pushing a pen in my direction. I picked up the pen and hesitated for just a moment. There was something about the book about the weight of the pen in my hand that made me uneasy. But I shook it off, scribbling my name quickly before sliding the book back towards her. She handed me the key, a real heavy brass key with the number 417 etched into it. Your room is on the fourth floor, she said, her eyes locking onto mine. The elevator is just around the corner. Enjoy your stay. There was something in her tone, something almost sympathetic that made me pause, but I was too tired to think much of it and I thanked her before heading towards the elevator. The elevator was ancient, with wrought iron gates that clanged shut with a deafening sound. As it rattled its way up to the fourth floor, I found myself growing more uneasy. The dim lighting and the creaking of the old machine did nothing to calm my nerves. When the elevator finally lurched to a stop, I stepped out onto a hallway that was eerily quiet. The hallway was long and narrow, with faded wallpaper peeling at the edges. The only light came from sconces mounted on the walls, their bulbs flickering weakly. As I walked towards my room, I noticed that the other doors along the corridor were all closed, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Finally, I reached room 417. The door looked like any other, but as I slid the key into the lock, a shiver ran down my spine. I turned the key and the door creaked open, revealing the room beyond. The room was modest, furnished with heavy dark wood that matched the rest of the hotel's decor. A large bed dominated the space, covered in a floral quilt that looked like it had been there since the hotel first opened. There was a small desk in the corner, an armchair by the window, and a wardrobe that loomed like a sentinel by the bed. I set my suitcase down and took a deep breath, trying to shake off the unease that had been building since I arrived. The room was quiet, too quiet, the kind of quiet that feels unnatural, as if the world outside had ceased to exist the moment I stepped inside. I decided to unpack a little before heading to bed. As I opened the wardrobe, I was met with a musty smell, as though the air inside had been trapped for decades. The space was empty save for a single hanger, which swayed slightly as I closed the door. I sat on the edge of the bed, feeling the springs creak beneath me. The silence was oppressive, and I found myself wishing for some noise, any noise, to break the tension. But there was nothing. No sound from the other rooms. No hum of traffic from the street below. Just silence. I shook my head, telling myself I was being ridiculous. It was just an old hotel and I was tired. That's all it was. I got ready for bed, 
Trying to ignore the growing sense of dread that was gnawing at the edges of my mind, I crawled under the heavy quilt, the mattress sagging under my weight. I closed my eyes, willing sleep to come, but it wouldn't. The silence was too loud, pressing down on me like a weight on my chest. And then, just as I was on the edge of sleep, I heard it. A whisper. I sat up in bed, my heart pounding. The room was still, but I could have sworn I heard a voice. A faint, indistinct whisper coming from somewhere in the room. I strained my ears, but there was nothing. I told myself it was just my imagination, a trick of the mind brought on by exhaustion. But sleep was even more elusive after that. I lay in bed, staring at the ceiling, my ears straining for any sound. Hours passed and finally exhaustion won out. I drifted into a fitful sleep, filled with restless dreams that I couldn't remember when I awoke. The next morning I woke feeling like I hadn't slept at all. My body was stiff, my mind foggy. The unease from the night before hadn't left. If anything, it had grown stronger. As I got dressed, I avoided looking in the mirror above the dresser. I couldn't explain why, but something about it made my skin crawl. It was old, the silvering around the edges tarnished, and it gave off a dull reflection. Every time I caught a glimpse of myself in it, I felt like I wasn't alone. Breakfast was served in a grand dining room on the first floor, with high ceilings and chandeliers that had seen better days. I picked at my food, unable to shake the feeling that something was wrong. The other guests, few as they were, sat in silence, their eyes downcast as though speaking would break some unspoken rule. After breakfast, I decided to take a walk around the town, hoping that fresh air and sunlight would chase away the lingering unease. The town was as quiet as the hotel, its streets empty save for the occasional car passing by. The buildings were old, their facades worn and faded, like the town itself was slowly crumbling away. I wandered through the streets, trying to shake off the feeling that something was watching me. But no matter where I went, I couldn't escape it. It was as if the shadows themselves were following me, stretching out from the corners of my vision. When I returned to the hotel, I was met with the same eerie silence that had greeted me the night before. The receptionist was gone, replaced by a young man who barely looked up as I passed by. I made my way back to my room, the sense of dread growing with each step. As I entered the room, I noticed something strange. The air felt heavier, thicker, like I was walking through water. The light coming in through the window seemed dimmer, casting long shadows across the floor. I sat down at the desk, hoping to get some work done, but I couldn't focus. My eyes kept drifting to the mirror above the dresser. I tried to ignore it, but it was like a magnet pulling my gaze towards it. Finally, I couldn't resist. I got up and walked over to the mirror, staring at my reflection. My face looked pale, my eyes sunken, but it wasn't just my reflection that unsettled me. There was something else, something in the background, a shadow. At first, I thought it was just a trick of the light, but the more I looked, the more certain I became. There was a shadow behind me, darker than the rest of the room, and it wasn't moving with the light. I turned around quickly, but the room was empty. I looked back at the mirror, and the shadow was gone. But I knew I hadn't imagined it, there had been something there, something watching me. I backed away from the mirror, my heart racing. The room felt different now, colder, like the temperature had dropped several degrees. I grabbed my jacket and left the room, not caring where I went as long as it was away from that mirror. I spent the rest of the day avoiding my room, wandering the town aimlessly. As the sun began to set, I found myself in a small bookstore tucked away on a side street. The shelves were lined with old books, their spines cracked and faded. I wandered through the aisles, my fingers brushing against the worn covers, when a title caught my eye. Haunted Hotels of America. I pulled the book from the shelf, my heart pounding as I flipped through the pages. My eyes scanned the index, searching for any mention of the Westbrook Inn. And there it was, listed under most haunted hotels. I turned to the page and began to read, my unease growing with each word. The Westbrook Inn had a long history, dating back to the early 1900s. It had been the site of several tragedies over the years, fires, accidents, and more than one mysterious death. But the most chilling story was about a guest who had stayed in room 417. According to the book, a man named William Hargrove had checked into room 417 in the 1920s. He was a traveling salesman in town for business, much like myself. But something happened during his stay, something that drove him to madness. The staff found him days later, dead in his bed, his face twisted in terror. The cause of death was never determined, and rumors spread that he had been driven to suicide by something in the room. The hotel tried to cover up the incident, 
but the story leaked out, and room 417 gained a reputation. Guests who stayed there reported strange occurrences, whispers in the night, cold spots and shadows that moved on their own. Some claimed to have seen a figure standing at the foot of the bed, watching them as they slept. I closed the book, my hands shaking. I didn't want to believe it, but I couldn't deny what I had experienced. The whispers, the shadow in the mirror, it all matched the stories in the book. I knew I couldn't stay another night in that room. I had to leave, but as I walked back to the hotel, I felt a sense of dread settle over me. I didn't know if it was fear or something more, something darker that was pulling me back. I returned to the hotel just as the sun was setting, casting long shadows across the lobby. The receptionist barely glanced at me as I made my way to the elevator. The ride up to the fourth floor felt even slower this time, the old machine groaning under the strain. When I stepped out onto the fourth floor, the air was thick with an oppressive stillness. The hallway seemed longer than before, the shadows darker. I approached room 417 with a sense of foreboding, my hand trembling as I inserted the key into the lock. The room was just as I had left it, but the atmosphere had changed. The air was colder, the shadows deeper. I hesitated in the doorway, every instinct telling me to turn and run. But something compelled me to step inside. I closed the door behind me, the sound echoing in the silence. I stood there for a moment, my eyes scanning the room, searching for any sign of the shadow I'd seen earlier. But the room was still. I walked over to the bed and sat down, my heart pounding in my chest. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to leave, but I felt trapped, as if something was holding me there. And then I heard it again. The whisper. It was faint at first, barely more than a breath. But it grew louder, more distinct, until I could make out the words, Leave now. I jumped to my feet, my heart racing. The voice was coming from the mirror, the same mirror where I had seen the shadow. I backed away, my eyes wide with terror. Leave before it's too late. The voice was insistent, urgent, and I knew I had to get out of there. I grabbed my suitcase and headed for the door, but as I reached for the handle, the door slammed shut on its own. I froze, my hand hovering in the air. The room was deathly silent now. The whispering stopped. I turned slowly, my eyes darting around the room, and then I saw it. The shadow. It was standing in the corner of the room, darker than the night, a shapeless mass that seemed to pulse with malevolent energy. I could feel its eyes on me, though I couldn't see them. It was watching me, waiting. My heart pounded in my chest as I backed away from the door. The shadow moved, gliding across the room towards me. I could feel its cold presence as it drew nearer, sucking the warmth from the air. I stumbled back, tripping over the edge of the bed and falling to the floor. The shadow loomed over me, a suffocating darkness that pressed down on me from all sides. I could barely breathe, the air thick with fear. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the shadow vanished. The room was still again, the oppressive silence returning. I scrambled to my feet, my breath coming in ragged gasps. I didn't know what had just happened, but I knew I couldn't stay in that room a moment longer. I grabbed my suitcase and ran to the door, flinging it open and racing down the hallway. The elevator was too slow, so I took the stairs, my feet pounding on the worn steps as I descended. I didn't stop until I was out of the hotel, standing on the sidewalk under the cold night sky. I looked up at the building, its windows dark and empty. The shadows seemed to shift and move, as if something was watching me from within. I didn't go back to the hotel. I spent the night in my car, parked on the side of the road, too afraid to go anywhere else. I didn't sleep, my mind racing with what I had seen. The next morning I drove back to the hotel to check out. The receptionist didn't say anything as I handed in my key, her eyes downcast. I didn't ask any questions. I just wanted to get out of there. It's been months since my stay at the Westbrook Inn, and I still can't shake the feeling that something followed me home. I hear whispers in the night faint but unmistakable, and I've caught glimpses of shadows moving in the corners of my vision. I've tried to move on, to forget what happened, but it's impossible. The memories cling to me like a shadow, a constant reminder of what I experienced in room 417. I've done some research since then, trying to find out more about the hotel and its history. I've found stories, accounts from other guests who have stayed in that room, and their experiences are eerily similar to mine. Some say that the shadow is the spirit of William Hargrove, trapped in the room where he died. Others believe it's something darker, something that was never human, feeding on the fear of those who stay in the room. I don't know what to believe. All I know is that I'll never forget what happened in that room. The whispering, the shadow, 
It's all too real, too vivid to be just a figment of my imagination. I've considered going back, confronting whatever it is that haunts room 417, but the thought terrifies me. I don't know if I could survive another night in that room, knowing what I know now. So I stay away, but the fear never leaves. It's always there, lurking in the back of my mind, waiting for the moment when I let my guard down. And when the whispers start again, as they always do, I remind myself that some places are best left alone. They're secrets buried in the past. But if you ever find yourself in a small town, checking into a grand old hotel that has seen better days, take my advice, avoid room 417. Because once you've stepped inside, you might never come out the same. The walls of some places hold on to memories, dark and terrifying, that refuse to be forgotten. My encounter at the Westbrook Inn was more than just a bad night's sleep. It was a brush with something unexplainable, something that still haunts me to this day. If you ever find yourself in a similar situation, listen to your instincts. Sometimes the best thing you can do is leave before it's too late. Would you have stayed in that room? Could you have ignored the whispers, the shadow that lurks just out of sight? Think about it the next time you check into a hotel room, because you never know what might be waiting for you in the dark. Thank you for sticking with me through this chilling tale. If you enjoyed this story, please share it with others who might appreciate a good scare. And remember, the next time you feel that uneasy chill in the air, it might not be just your imagination.